Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about other reactions of arine diazonium salts as electrophiles. Um, in the previous video, I shared that anilines undergo a reaction with sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid to form these arine, the benzene diazonium salts, and you, the other substituents, of course, can, can be on there. Um, and that in the Sandmeyer reaction, they react with uh, various copper nucleophiles like um, oh, copper halides, copper cyanide, copper, and there's generally copper one salts to make, uh, to substitute the diazonium group for whatever that X nucleophile is. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about some other nucleophiles. And, you know, successes and failures with, with, with them. We're going to start with water. So these benzene diazonium salts have some supercharged leaving groups on them. So things that are perhaps not even the best nucleophiles will probably still displace the nitrogen. And so we can react... Uh, benzene diazonium chloride with water and this needs to be heated and most likely this is more more likely to be an SN1 and not the radical mechanism described in the previous video but this is another way that you can make phenol uh, starting with aniline you want to add a fluorine nucleophile, uh, you need a nucleophilic source of fluorine that's not HF, which is terrifying. And so let's grab our, our reaction. The uh, typical uh, types of sources of nucleophilic fluorine is the BF4 anion, so tetrafluoroborate. This thing is a source of nucleophilic fluorine, much like BH4- is a source of nucleophilic uh, hydro, or, sorry, nucleophilic uh, yeah, hydride. This reaction doesn't really need heated. There are other nucleophilic fluorine sources, but this is a common one. I don't need to keep repeating this benzene diazonium salt label. Uh, hydrogen. There are nucleophilic sources of hydrogen, but hydrides aren't going to work here. Uh, and in fact, there's, well, the hydrides aren't going to work here. Oh, and I, I forgot to replace my OH there. So this makes fluorine. There is a reagent out there, H3PO2. So this is hypophosphorous acid that will convert the diazonium chlorides and diazonium salts into hydrogen. Uh, and the structure of this thing, the phosphorus, oxygen, oxygen, H. H, so it has these phosphorus hydrogen single bonds in it. And these phosphorus hydrogen single bonds are definitely, phosphorus is le less, as a, or probably polarized towards hydrogen. This thing is a reducing agent, so this reaction might actually follow the more radical pathway. And then finally, this is a cool reaction, uh, activated arenes. Now this reaction is not technically a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. It's actually an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. But these arene diazonium salts can react with activated arenes, so like phenols or, or other amines that you add in a second step. And these things are nucleophiles, but not at the carbon, but at the nitrogen on the diazonium group. And so after proton transfer and whatnot, this reaction forms the 
these diazo compounds. Uh, and many of these things are dyes. They have interesting colors. And so if you go looking up the structures of some artificial dyes, you'll, you're going to find this diazo functional group uh, present in the structures of a number of them. This video wraps up the, the reactions of the diazonium salts. Uh, in the next video, which I'm going to try to do, I'm going to talk about palladium catalyzed coupling reactions. Specifically, I want to talk about the Suzuki reaction, which is one of the more versatile ones. Thank you for watching.